People are getting stupid rich off this crypto game, but not by playing it. See, the world's largest live streaming site is in the middle of a gambling boom. The slots category is filled with gambling games like Wheels of Fortune, Slot Machines, Blackjack, and Baccarat. It's now the seventh most popular content category ahead of Fortnite. And this content boom is being fueled by another concurrent boom, the rise of crypto casinos, websites where gamers can transfer cash into cryptocurrencies and then use it to play virtual casino games. These casinos have exploded, and as they've grown, so has the criticism about them. Thousands of people recently signed a change.org petition asking advertisers, including huge companies like Nvidia and Pepsi, to reconsider advertising on the platform. Streamers have come out apologizing, saying these gambling streams are immoral, that they obfuscate the reality of what's happening, that they expose underage youth to gambling addictions. And crypto itself, which already hasn't had the best year, is getting caught in the crosshairs. It's really a complicated issue, but it comes down to a few simple questions. What are these casinos? Who uses them? How do they work? And what does it mean for the future of crypto if it becomes more and more associated with things like this? If you're like me when you first heard the phrase crypto casino, your first thought probably is, that's legal. And the answer is, maybe. Any crypto casino is going to technically operate out of a location where gambling has been legalized. Stake, the self-proclaimed leading online casino, operates under a gaming license in Curaçao. When you check out the location Stake gives as its registered address on Google Earth, it appears to be a rundown shack, probably next to 10 other rundown shacks that represent 10 other multi-million dollar corporations. But unlike a non-virtual casino, the people who actually use Stake and these other crypto casinos are not based in Curaçao. They're located around the world, many of them playing these games in locations where gambling is most definitely not legal. And the public's catching on. On June 28, 2022, members of Congress wrote a letter to the Department of Justice asking them to take some sort of action against offshore sports betting. But it's not that simple because users of these sites have VPNs to disguise their location, meaning it's impossible to prove conclusively that anyone's breaking the law. I mean, that's good news for the VPN world, the tech works, I guess. But let's say you could prove that illegal gambling was taking place. There's still a ton of complications, like what laws apply? Is it local? federal, international, there's just too many unknowns. Now you know how the Department of Justice feels. And as much as the blame likes to get pointed at crypto, this isn't anything new. Offshore gambling has always been a thorn in the side of US regulators, but the rise of crypto and other virtual currencies just added another loophole. They made it slightly easier. A lot of what's being exchanged on these sites isn't technically legal tender. And because tech moves so fast, there's always going to be new virtual currencies hitting the market, some designed with the express purpose of evading the law. And as you might expect, members of Congress are having a tough time wrapping their heads around all this. My worry is lawmakers are gonna look at this and decide crypto's a problem, just ban crypto. See, gambling is a tricky area right now. Sports betting is now legal in many states. We're clearly moving in the direction of widespread legalization. There's an argument to be made that since we're already moving towards legalization, targeting these offshore casinos is silly. There's a good chance that by the time the Justice Department even figures out how to prosecute them, it's not even illegal anymore. Not to mention the fact that these casinos do have gaming licenses. They'll always make the argument that the actual gambling is occurring within the confines of where the casino is located, wherever it's located. But there's still growing public scrutiny, largely because of the link between casinos and Twitch. A recent Wired review found that 64 of the top 1,000 most viewed streamers were streaming crypto slots. And you might be wondering, why are they taking the risk? Why would a popular streamer advertise something where, as hard as it might be to prove, we all know the underlying activity is basically illegal? The answer, is money. Several streamers have gone public recently with the money they make on these gambling streams, and the numbers are insane. A popular streamer who goes by the name Mizkiff said he was getting offered as much as 35,000 an hour. That's an hour to play these games on his channel. And this is just the start. There are people with far larger platforms who haven't gone public with their revenue numbers. Drake has a sponsorship deal with Stake and will often post stories where he places gigantic million dollar plus bets. And these huge bets are actually where streamers are putting themselves at the largest legal risk. When you watch most of these streams, you see players going wild, making massive bets, and at times losing a huge amount of money in a very brief 
brief period. This can make for super fun content, but it seems impossible that they all have this much money to blow, like hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. That's because it is. Often these contracts give streamers regular top-ups to their balance. So that means in addition to an hourly sponsorship rate, they're getting all of their losses covered. There's an argument that streamers are actually committing crimes here, malicious deception, or even outright fraud by failing to disclose the details of the contracts. Now, some streamers do disclose this, which is great, but not everyone does. So even though they act devastated when they lose, there's zero risk involved. However, there's an obvious counter argument to all of this, which is streamers never claim to be role models. I'm not an example for people on how to live their lives. I'm never in my life would I ever set out to be an example for people on how to live their lives. If you need an example for how to live, and you just shouldn't have been born. These are people who sit in their room playing video games for insane hours every day. Is that a lifestyle viewers are supposed to emulate? Probably not. This is the argument that so many streamers themselves make. They're just entertainers. They're creating content. These casinos are paying them like so many other sponsorship deals, and their job is to use that money to create the best, most compelling, most exciting content they can. That's it. Anything else is just grasping at straws. In addition to this, live gambling streams can often be helpful for those who are overcoming gambling addictions. People who say watching a gambling stream can help them scratch that itch without actually relapsing. So maybe these gambling streams are actually doing some good for society, but it does get a little bit more complex when you take a step back and consider who the primary fans are, and most importantly, how young they are. But before we dive into that wild rabbit hole, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, CryptoCasino.net. I guess .com was taken. With CryptoCasino.net, you can play games that mathematically guarantee that even if you win at first, over time, you will lose your money. For those that didn't unsubscribe yet, I'm just kidding. Each verification on Twitch is very minimal. A streamer can indicate that a stream is intended for mature audiences, but this doesn't restrict the viewer in any way. They can still just click start watching and watch. This means many viewers are young, very young, like too young to gamble, even if it was totally legal. And gambling addiction is a big problem, especially for the underage. According to the National Center for Responsible Gaming, as high as 9% of young people struggle with serious gambling addictions, compared to just 1% for adults. Also, let's remember, this is not the first time Twitch has had to deal with gambling-related controversy. A few years ago, there was a major trend called skins gambling, where gamers placed bets and gambled with virtual goods from Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This became incredibly popular and just as quickly became a gigantic magnet for fraud. FaZe Banks, the co-owner of the esports team FaZe Clan, said he made upwards of $200,000 per day running his own extremely shady skin gambling site, which was incorporated in the Caribbean island of Antigua. For a lot of young gamers, skin gambling functioned very much like a gateway drug. At first, you're betting with virtual goods, which aren't really worth anything, but if you're a gamer, they certainly take on the feeling of real money. Then once you're exposed to real gambling, often through the same streams, it doesn't feel all that different, except, of course, the stakes are now a whole lot higher. Now, the casinos themselves will argue that this is all a stretch. After all, no one is being forced to do anything. You don't have to make an account if you don't want to. You don't have to spend your money if you don't want to. When people click on the links and start gambling on these sites, they're making their own choice. And if they're underage, then that responsibility should fall on the parents, who should be monitoring what their kids are doing online, especially when it has to do with actual money. This argument does make some sense, but it starts to fall apart when you think about those sponsorship deals. But the sheer amount of money these casinos pay streamers to advertise on their channels, why are these streamers getting paid this insane amount of money by these casinos, often double what they make with any other brand deal? Why are they getting $35,000 per hour? Well, it's because the casinos know the investment will pay off. Getting people addicted to gambling, even if they're underage, this isn't some tragic, unforeseen outcome of all of this. That's the whole point. That's the business model. And it'll pay off, not just because of how popular the top streamers are, but because of the way they're popular, because of the uniquely intimate relationship they've formed with their fan bases. Think about the relationship between someone and their favorite streamer. They often spend hours of their day watching this person, and they aren't watching some highly produced video. They're watching the streamers unfiltered, unedited, just being 
being themselves. And this can give the fan base a false sense that they actually know their favorite streamers, that they know them as well as they know their own friends, and that they can trust them. And that's why the dishonesty about what's going on in these streams can be so destructive. Because there's an inherent belief that when you watch a live stream, you're watching something totally unadulterated and raw, but you're not. As these casinos and streamers come under more and more public scrutiny, crypto itself is taking a whole lot of fire. Crypto, after all, is one of the reasons these casinos are able to evade legal scrutiny. Crypto is the reason that these young viewers can lose a lot of money without ever feeling like they're losing money. Crypto is the thing that blurs all the lines, that's made offshore gambling already a major problem for regulators far more challenging to prosecute. And given that the public view of crypto has already taken some serious hits this year, being associated with these casinos is not helpful. We've talked before about how crypto has been incredibly useful for hackers and other cyber criminals. This is just another evolution of that. The thing that makes crypto so revolutionary, the freedom, the lack of centralized control, is the very same thing that lends itself to so many nefarious uses. When it comes to these casinos, you can make plenty of arguments on both sides about the legality of them, about the timing, even about the morality. But the one thing you can't argue is that this is all very, very bad for the mainstream public view of crypto as a whole, at a time when it really doesn't need any more bad publicity. And there's nothing wrong with gambling, so long as you're making an informed adult decision to do it, but that isn't always the case. No matter how you try to spin it, there's something inherently unsettling about this, about streamers gambling with the house's money, pretending to risk it all when they're actually risking nothing, very few disclosing it. And let's remember, the casino operators know all of this, that's why they pay streamers so much money, the underage, highly vulnerable, highly susceptible audience. That's not a problem for them. That's the whole point. But things might be changing because Twitch just announced that as of October 18th, all non-US licensed gambling games will be banned from the platform, specifically calling out Stake.com and Rubet in their statement. So hopefully all of this crypto gambling talk is about to take a turn for the better. Because the last thing crypto needs right now is association with activities that skirt the law. Not when crypto is fighting a battle of legitimacy in the public eye.